Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Now, I have a lot of games. A uh, thousand and five, to be exact. I've seen people with obviously a lot more, but for me, a thousand and five is probably too many. A lot of these games I've never opened, have no intention of beating, or frankly have no idea how I received them. But I feel it's time to really challenge myself. By playing and reviewing every single one. Also in alphabetical order. This is Getting Through It. Now, there's some groundwork I want to lay down before we get into it. This is not replacing my series Game Dive, as this is just a brief look and review into many, many games where I'll be giving a more quote-unquote to-the-point overview of the games I have. If I have enough content to turn one of these games into a Game Dive episode, you'll know about it. Some games I'll be covering in a clump if they're all from the same series and way too similar to one another, as you'll probably see in a few minutes. Also, I'm doing this in alphabetical order. Some games will be placed out of the order to the franchise they're in. This is something I'll note when it happens, but I want to stick to the alphabetical order as I feel it'll help me go into games with no expectations. But furthermore, there's some rules I have to give myself to really make this a worthwhile experience for everyone. Rule number one, I have to play every game for at least 45 minutes in order to give everything an equal chance and collect enough footage. This is an at least. I will most likely go over 45 minutes for a lot of these games, but if I truly dread something, I have to play it for 45 minutes. And rule number two, I have to give each game at least one pro and one con and a rating out of 10. And rule number three, I have to enter each game totally unbiased. I have a lot of games I absolutely despise often before even playing them for whatever reason. Open-mindedness, can't say that word. Open-mindedness is what will get me through this, as if I go into something expecting to hate it, I will. So, now that I've laid the groundwork and established some rules, let's get into it. Starting off strong is the exciting, groundbreaking, absolutely exhilarating 18 Wheels of Steel series. Hard, hard truck? Great name, everyone. Now, if you can believe it, these games are actually somewhat nostalgic for me. I remember downloading them as a kid on my parents' computer, which would totally wreck the computer. And for a game, I had absolutely no fucking clue what was going on. And frankly, as an adult, I still have no fucking clue what's going on. Well, oh, W turns on the windshield wipers. How do I turn them off, though? How do I, like, oh, oh, the jobs are over there. How do I load it? Is that, is that now loaded? Yay, you did it! So, to say the least, it hasn't at all stood the test of time. Even the visuals are terribly bland and uninteresting. Well, at least the first one is. I could not, for the life of me, get the other two to even work properly. The second one would play, but my keyboard didn't work, and it would crash in the menu. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> crash. And the third one would crash if I even tried to hit play. Straight up doesn't work. Just straight up. This is so disappointing. So, yeah, not not the best. But if we're being fair, I did have my fun with the first game, and a little with the second, despite how tedious they both were to get through. <laughs> I lost the trailer, what do you mean? Hold on a day. <laughs> I lost the trailer! Fuck! Oh, there's the police. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, don't lose it again. <laughs> don't fuck at me! Damn it! What's going on? What the fuck? Don't honk at me, asshole! What the hell? Uh oh. Okay, and that's that. What? What did I hit? Can't change the camera. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm just doing my best, man. Oh, sorry, dude. Sorry, guy. The police are right there. <laughs> Reckless driving. I did it! Cargo delivered! Woo! We did it, boys. 
fucking hard truck 18 wheels of steel suck my dick. All right, so for a little context, in these games, all you do is pick up a load of some description, then drive it to another point, hopefully within the set time frame, without crashing your truck or breaking any road rules. This earns you money, eventually upgrading your company and trucks and whatnot. Obviously it was early days of making a game like this fun, but for what it is, it is fucking boring. So I have one pro. It is very replayable. As each city you go to is different and each load you take is too. I could see myself maybe loving this as a kid if I were able to figure it out. Uh, and three cons. It is very boring, the systems are very archaic, and the AI is very strange, as you hopefully saw in this clip. What the fuck? Before. So to give this game a rating, I'm gonna have to give it a pretty solid 4 out of 10. XX is a Mega Man style roguelike with an art style straight from DeviantArt. Which I mean, isn't a bad thing, it's just not a style I'm particularly into at all. It makes me feel like I'm playing a Flash game with better production value, but that's just my own opinion. The gameplay is pretty good, though it had issues with my controller as I don't have an Xbox controller and DS for Windows didn't seem to work with it. So sometimes instead of jumping, I would shoot, which uh... Yeah, not great. I'm not the biggest fan of roguelikes unless the gameplay is fun enough to make up for the concept. I just tend to get frustrated. Fuck man, what the? And this isn't an exception. I found myself replaying levels I've already done in the first 30 minutes of playing, getting frustrated with awkward or overwhelming enemy placement, and finding levels with the old roguelike charm of feeling very much computer generated and jarring. Look, this isn't a bad game. I had some fun with it, and I liked the concept. I just couldn't find myself that into it. I liked how smooth the gameplay and animations are, and sometimes the level design does have that Mega Man-like energy, making getting to the end all the more satisfying. And I do have to praise the music. On the better levels, it really did help elevate it. But the roguelike aspects just didn't work for me, and the art style really wasn't something I could get into. I think for me this game is a weak 7 out of 10. Case of Distrust is a noir-style point-and-click game with a very unique silhouette art style. You play as a female detective in 1924 San Francisco trying to solve a very strange case which I don't want to spoil, even in the slightest. This was a game I got through Humble Bundle. It wasn't something I picked out, but just part of a large bundle I wanted, so I never actually thought to give it a chance, which now I deeply regret. This is definitely one of the better point-and-click games I've ever played, and definitely one of the most unique. Everything is described mostly through text, and the items you'd collect in a normal point-and-click game present themselves instead as evidence and statements, things you can use to contradict people or point out for further information, a system ingeniously taught to the player in the first five minutes of gameplay. The game opens with the main character waking up to two big eyes staring at her, building tension as it's unclear who these eyes belong to and what they want, setting the tone for the game and what to expect thematically and aesthetically. Eventually it's revealed to be a stray cat that occasionally wanders into the main character's home asking for food, which brilliantly leads into a natural tutorial about the game's main mechanic, as you have to then click around your apartment, finding the key item you can use to contradict the cat's demands to give it food perfectly tying into the game's themes of distrust and relationships. An incredibly smart and intriguing opening to a game that had me hooked right away. Whatever came next, I had to see what it was. Most of the game henceforth is about collecting evidence and statements, and then corroborating them with suspects. A very simple but effective gameplay loop, worthy enough for me to see the game through to the end. There's a lot of plot twists and deductions to make which feel very natural. At no point did I feel like the game was overly guiding me. It felt like being a real detective, looking over clues and figuring out what to do next, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't have to use a guide at some point. The soundtrack also works perfectly for the aesthetic, and it never got old to me. It's very simple noir tunes, light percussion and an upright bass, a combo you can never go wrong with. It's used very effectively as well, as each character has their own little tune that establishes on its own what kind of person they are.
But this leads into my one and only criticism. I wish the music were used more dynamically. Going in and out of character portraits, the music suddenly changes, which in a few instances can give a small amount of whiplash. I feel this is almost an issue with the way the game's coded, because it seems music just plays depending on what's on screen, rather than on what's happening in the scene. I would have wanted to see it flow better, building on itself depending on what stage of entering a location you're in. But again, a very minor issue that didn't take me out of the game at all. Also, I maybe found, like, two spelling mistakes. <gasps> no, look, it's not a big deal. For this one, I've got to give it a strong 9 out of 10. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about a case of distrust, and it doesn't have many reviews on Steam. So please, if anything I said interests you, please pick this up. You won't regret it. Time is a 3D platformer in similar vein to Mario Odyssey and Banjo-Kazooie. I don't really want to talk about this for too long actually, as I want to eventually do a longer video on this game. I love it very dearly, and it deserves much more time than what I have right now. So I'll just say this, A Hat in Time is one of the best games ever made. It's such an absolute delight to play. The platforming, music, graphics, story, and characters are all perfect. I genuinely struggle trying to think of a flaw with this game. Every time I play it, it just gets better and better. There's such a huge variety in gameplay and levels that it never gets old, and the platforming in itself is fun enough to last an entire 20 hour game. My only real con is that the art style took some adjusting to for me, but I eventually grew to love it, so like, not a real con. I guess the camera's a little funny sometimes, but like, barely? Anyway, I don't feel comfortable giving this anything other than a 10. Maybe that'll change if slash when I choose to look at it more in depth. A New Beginning is a game where you ask the main character to do something. Clean your dishes. He then refuses to do it. <laughs> and then... I laugh like a maniac. Stop! <laughs> Sad sack of a man. Take it with you. How do you? Okay. Sometimes You wouldn't have one otherwise? I'll take, I'll a, take break a break later, later after, after I fix the vlogger. I fucking love that you ask him to do things and he's like, no. <laughs> a sad, a sad son. <laughs> Read the book. God, you tell him to do things and he's like, no. This is where my old life is buried. Okay, let's take, let's a, take look. a look. <laughs> Oh, why is she standing like that? Come on. Well, I don't know what to do about that. That was a complete guess. It still doesn't work. <laughs> I don't like point and click games. I don't like them. I hate this feeling. Like, especially minute one. Where it's like, well, what am I meant to fucking do? What am I meant to do? Sure. There's- oh, you're kidding me. You are joking. I think that's a pretty major issue if you fucking have to, like, have a thing that tells the player where shit is. Like, it should just stand out, shouldn't it? <laughs> really pronounced but for no reason. Like, it just doesn't need to be like that, man. This thing that, like... Happening. What? What? Stop! 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 Stop this. this! What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Stop! You are so, so stupid. stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, great! Got a person who miss hypersensitivity. He killed a bird. All the kids these need these days need a bloody trigger warning, am I right? God, bloody PC gone mad. 
It just doesn't need to be like this. Oh, apparently I did it. <laughs> As am I. 7 out of 10. A story about my uncle is a story-based platformer with some really derivative gameplay, awful generic writing, and some really, really bad voice acting to top it off. It's just one of those games, you know? The characters talk way too much, explain everything way too much, and seem overly amazed by things that sh should seem normal in context. How can I talk to someone who's not even human? Who still feel like it was perfectly normal? You need to get over it, man. And all delivered by some really fucking bad voice actors. Any moment you thought you were getting into a rhythm with the gameplay and starting to find yourself into it, it's ruined by some truly dreadful line delivery of some truly dreadful writing. What was that? I never heard a creature sounding as terrifying, and I imagined it wouldn't be happy about visitors. God, the voice acting is so bad. Just really not a fan. I just didn't find myself into a story about my uncle at all. Also not a fan of that name. The gameplay was pleasant, I suppose, but it's not something I couldn't find in a better game. This is a game about momentum and flow. Then immediately they bring you to a section where to progress, you have to stand completely still and do nothing for a few seconds. Waiting is not and never is a good gameplay mechanic. You're literally giving the player moments where they cannot play your game. It's poor game design and a very poor way of creating variation in your game about momentum. My only real pro is that the game looks very nice in terms of environments. Nothing outstanding though, and it's ruined by some really awful character models with weird animations. Why does this guy have low poly forks in his pocket? Why does she run like that? Who's to say? Really not a fan of this one at all. Week 3 out of 10. The Star Wars Saga Troy is about men, it's about weapons, it's about land, and it's about them hitting their sticks together. It's about me, you know, it's about, uh, so in the game, in the game you fight, and you walk around and you tell people that they're no good. You fight and you fight the guys. Uh, it's like, why I like about the game is, is that you eat? Um, and I don't like cowboys, they're cocks throbbing hard. I gotta, you know, I was thinking about numbers. I gotta say, probably it's like a seven, it's like a eight, it's like a eight. It's like a eight out of ten. Being about what is fighting? Alright, here's the truth. I went into this game knowing I wouldn't like it. The first time I played it, I couldn't get a grip with the controls, pun intended. The car fucking slides all over the place and it felt awful. At 20 minutes, I was ready to call it early and concede defeat, but I said no. I said 45 minutes, so 45 minutes it is. I kept playing. And then suddenly it clicked. It was this message here. Why didn't I think about it before? I gave it a go. Practice some more and some more and some more, and then... I get it now. This game is fun and zen, like it says. You just need to practice, and ignore the prompt that keeps mentioning how much you're crashing. Each track takes practice, and the game knows this. Hence the lack of a timer on every track. Brilliant. The minimalist art style and chill music all says, hey, quit stressing, bud. Yeah, there's too much sub-frequencies when you crash, and it feels awful to slide out of control. But you'll get it. Just hold on. I believe in you, and I love you dearly. Just so dearly. Maybe that was just me. 8 out of 10.
Apsu is an atmospheric art narrative game with light puzzle elements, beautiful environments, and a wonderful visual narrative. When the game came out, it received a few criticisms for how close to Journey it is, which I do think is a fair comparison, but I don't think the game warrants the criticism in my own opinion. This is a truly beautiful game. The swimming is smooth and fun, the environments are incredibly detailed, the fish feel so dynamic and behave as they would in the real world. Clearly, this game had so much love and care put into it, I don't think it's fair to criticize experimentation within a new genre of gaming. Journey is obviously the better game, but that doesn't mean Abzu doesn't have a large amount of merits itself. I've always loved just exploring the areas, interacting with the fish, and seeing what else there is to find. And the music complements the game so beautifully, I could listen to it for hours. Really beautiful atmospheric orchestra tracks, which ramp up when they need to, naturally sliding back down when everything comes to a head. My main criticism of the game I have is these fast bits. They serve no real purpose in the game other than to show some exciting visuals playing the game naturally doesn't offer. There's no real gameplay here. Moving into these herds of fish doesn't do anything and it also doesn't make sense for them to be there given that we're meant to be caught in a current. Frankly, I just wish these sections had been removed. I feel the game would have been fine without them. In the end, I have to give Absu a weak 8 out of 10. I love its art style through and through, and each time I go back to it, I don't regret it. Oh, please wait. Hold on everyone. Unsure what I'm waiting for at this point. Will it work if I like walk away and come back? No. Oh. <laughs> I wonder what's wrong with that. Is it even worth looking up? Maybe it's a quick fix. I'll look it up quickly. How about now? It's like, it's like especially not working now. Thank fucking God. I didn't want to play another point and click game. <laughs> she doesn't work. She doesn't work. What can I say? Aegis Defenders is an action platformer with tower defense mechanics. Now, this is a tough one for me because it isn't a bad game at all, it's just not a great one either. You roam around these platform sections before eventually getting to a tower defense section where you have to fight off waves of enemies. It sounds like a decent idea, but it's just not fleshed out enough. You set up traps, then fight the enemies as they come in, usually just standing in one place hitting the shoot button over and over again until there's no more enemies and you have to do it again. It feels very repetitive, and the lackluster music doesn't help complement it. The platform sections aren't great either, as they're very quick and very uninspired. It just feels like meandering before the main event, which isn't particularly great either. The story seems somewhat interesting, but it's nothing I haven't seen before already. The main thing I can say is that the controls are intuitive, and the visuals are very nice. It came out at a time when the market was oversaturated with pixel visual games, but for what it is, it's a pretty nice looking one. Maybe if I go deeper, the gameplay gets more interesting, but I just can't be bothered to find out. I have to give this one a weak 6 out of 10. Also, I'm sorry to have to end it here on such a negative note. Well, I'm gonna have to call it there. 13's a pretty good start, right? Right, everyone? Only 992 to go. A solid start, I reckon. Okay, barely a dent, but look, I'm excited to get through this. There's so many more games that either look hilarious or very fantastic that I just haven't played. So tune in next time for hopefully more than 13. Maybe less. I guess we'll see. But in the new episode's wake, expect to see a man named Alan. See you later.